And welcome back. You're watching the late edition here on SABC News Channel. Advocate Hyuna Sessi has resigned from the Stellenbosch University Council with immediate effect following the outcome of the Stellenbosch University convocation meeting on Thursday evening. This has been confirmed by the council chair, Nikki Newton King, who also thanked Hyunas for his service. The convocation, which forms part of the university community, is drawn from alumni, full-time academic staff and full full-time academic staff of the university who have since retired. The university says that Hyannis resigned from a council on Saturday. He and most of the executive committee have been voted out after convocation members voted on a motion to remove them over their handling of nepotism claims against Rector and Vice Chancellor Professor Wim de Villiers. The first motion of no confidence excluded Vice President Rudy Bates. However, Bates was the sole subject of a second motion of no confidence, which failed to garner sufficient votes. The motion stemmed from allegations that Bates was behind a media campaign against executive committee members in the convocation, sowing division and damaging the university's image. We're joined now by Ahmed Esop, a consultant and research associate at the Ali Mazri Center for Higher Education Studies at the University of Johannesburg. A very good evening to you and thank you so much for speaking to us. Just in your understanding, so Stellenbosch University President, as we mentioned, Jan Hirnes, most of his executive committee um, members have been voted out after a motion to remove them over that handling of nepotism claims. But other reports say it's a resignation. Is there a distinction and how important is it to make it? Well, if he's resigned, as I understand it, the convocation had a meeting uh, earlier this week at which a motion of low confidence was passed. Uh, I'm not sure of the details of what transpired at the meeting, uh, but I would imagine uh, the, the executive committee uh, lost the motion, and in that context, uh, the president resigned. Okay. So the allegations of nepotism, as we mentioned, were against the rector and the vice chancellor, Professor Wim de Villiers, and the vice president, Rudy Bayes, for sowing division and damaging the university's image. But it would seem that they remain, however, though the president and the ex co go. Do you understand why? Well, let's put, uh, let me, there are two points to, to be made. The first is that in relation to the nepotism allegations, as I understand it, and is largely based on media reports, uh, the vice chancellor has the discretion to admit students uh, into the university. And in terms of the university's regulations and policies, is able to do so excluding family members who are his immediate family members, that is sons, daughters and so forth, but not his extended family. And as I understand it, that the two students who were admitted into the medical school uh, uh, were members of his extended family, nephews or nieces or, or so on. I tend to be corrected on that. Uh, in so far as the policy allows the vice chancellor to do so, he's clearly not uh, at least based on, on the surface, in the wrong. However, it seems to me it is an error of judgment. I think it's inappropriate for any vice chancellor or for the university to have a policy that allows a vice chancellor the discretion to accept members of his extended family or, or admit them into the university, particularly into the medical faculty where competition is very high, where students with six or seven A's don't get in uh, because of the limited number of places. But I think the background that we need to understand that at Stellenbosch University, over a number of years, there's been a battle, a battle, if you want, between the old guard. And I think the old guard are largely members of the convocation or the executive committee of convocation. And the battle has been around the role of the language, the language policy of the university, which, uh, as you may recall, was changed from Afrikaans to English. There was legal action taken by members of convocation against the university. Uh, which they lost in the Supreme Court of Appeal. I think it may, I, I can't recall for sure whether it went to the Constitutional Court. But also at the time that this happened in 2019, when the university nominated one of its uh, 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 on, uh, students, past students, uh, Judge Edwin Cameron, as Chancellor of the University, 
uh, the convocation members, and particularly the member of the DA, Leon Schreiber, who's a member of convocation, uh, alleged that the vice chancellor was in cahoots with Judge Cameron, that Judge Cameron in the Supreme Court of Appeal had ruled in favor of Stellenbosch because he'd been offered the post of chancellor. Now, the chancellor post, firstly, is a titular post. It has no particular powers other than the fact that the chancellor resides over uh, graduation ceremonies. And Judge Cameron, as we know, is a respected member, a retired respected member of the judiciary whose honor and integrity is beyond question. So I think there's a broader battle about where the, you know, the direction of the university in the context of the changes uh, uh, of a democratic society. And I'm so glad that you outlined that because I was going to ask you what the role of the convocation is, its president and the executive committee, and you've been able to bring it to contemporary issues that uh, the ordinary man on the street would then be interested in. So what do you see going forward? Because we understand that uh, the vice president, Rudy Bayes, has now been tasked with, uh, you know, the role of furthering the wishes of the uh, convocation or the executive. But how does he do that when he himself has been accused of trying to sow division? Look, look it seems to me the council would have to properly investigate and assess uh, what, what the uh, shenanigans, if you want, in the executive, executive committee of convocation have been. I'm not privy to that. I think the problem we face uh, with convocations in general with, with universities historically that were white, in this case white Africana, that the members of convocation, the alumni of the university will be uh, come from that constituency, that many of them are, are opposed to the kinds of changes, the fact that large, larger numbers of black students are being admitted, the language policy was changed in relation to that in order to allow black students who do not who are not african speaking to come into the university so the direction that the university is taking may not be uh, supported by convocation if you recall well you may not uh, uh, the previous vice chancellor professor chris brink uh, uh, was hounded out of the office as a result of his support for changing the language policy in fact in his book he recalls at the meeting one of the council members said to him uh, professor, this is our university. Don't, 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 uh, don't interfere. So there's a broader context where, you know, uh, Stellenbosch University was the home of Af Afrikanism, where the Afrikaner power elite were educated. Henrik Verwoerd was a professor at Stellenbosch University. So I think we need to understand the, the, the battles that are taking place and the conflict and the shenanigans in the convocation in that context. So I think it seems to me that the council will have to sit back, assess what, uh, what has happened, and then engage with the convocation in the role and how to reestablish its legitimacy. Mm. So in this case, uh, it was alleged that the executive committee acted in bad faith, contrary to the convocation statutes and rules. So if we are talking about this university, these um, organs of its uh, process, procedure and rules, what opportunities are there for a transformative society? Look, I think we have a broader problem of institutional governance in many higher education institutions. Uh, the convocation is there to advise the university on issues, either at the, at the request of the university or issues that it thinks are important. Uh, it doesn't have the power to make decisions. The council is the, uh, uh, the highest decision-making body of the university. But if you look at a range of universities, what is happening at UCT at the moment, at UNISA, uh, 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 I see something at the Central University of Technology, where often councils become the battlegrounds themselves for different interests, student groups, staff, members of convocation. So it may be that as a country we need to rethink the kinds of governance structures we've established in higher education institutions. They've been transformed in the sense that the demand uh, 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 pre-1994 was a democratization of university councils to be more representative. So we have staff and students that have been changed in terms of the demography and so forth. But in practice, in many cases, 
that has led to further conflict because of the way different interests perceive their role and what their role within council should be. When you join a council of a university, you should be looking at what is in the best interest of the university, not in terms of what is in the best interest of your constituency. So if you come, say, from the SRC, as a council member, you're not there to put forward the particular demands of the SRC, but to engage to see what is in the best interest of the university. And unfortunately, regrettably, that doesn't happen in many cases, where councils become battlegrounds for different interest groups within the university and sometimes outside of the university. In many cases, universities, because they're large, if you want businesses in terms of uh, uh, goods and services they procure, Council members have also been, I'm not talking about Stellenbosch now, have been embroiled in disputes, tender, tender uh, issues and so forth. So there's a bigger issue about whether the way in which we currently have constituted councils post-1994 is the most appropriate structure or whether we should be rethinking councils given the nature of universities, the complexity of the modern university and so on. All right. Thank you so much for your time and insights. Much appreciated. Ahmed Esop is a, a consultant and research associate at the Ali Mazri Center for Higher Education Studies at the University of Johannesburg. We're going to leave it there.